I watched the presentation, A Functional Approach to Autism by Rebecca Connick, Occupational Therapist. Approximately one in every 59 children are born with autism. Albert Einstein. Dr. Einstein had no speech until age three. Steve Jobs. He was a loner. He brought snakes to school. Leonardo da Vinci. This man was far advanced on the autism spectrum. I'm not naughty. I'm autistic. And I just get too much information. This is Lloyd I.M. and you're listening to Takiwatanga. Love Not Cure, exploring autism one strength at a time. Different kinds of therapy can help autistic kids progress with learning. One of them is occupational therapy. Occupational therapy is a support provided to people who have limited ability to carry out daily activities due to an illness, injury, or health impediments. For a child to succeed in learning, Rebecca said, the approach to learning for kids on the autism spectrum should be fun. UNICEF published an article about the science of play. Learning through play is not just fun. It's fundamental to your child's development. Another study at Harvard University suggests that children who learn through play pose a significant improvement in emotional regulation and attention. This could also help in the development of the executive function. Before we deep dive into our topic, let's talk about executive function and why it is important to understand this. When you think about executive function, think of this as the command center of your brain. This command center controls your focus, your ability to accomplish tasks, and helps you in regulating your emotions. With learning through play, we can improve a child's command center by making learning a fun activity. During the presentation, I have noted down three key ideas. Sensory need, goal setting, creativity at play. Number one, sensory need. Before we deep dive into goal setting, we have to know what sensory needs are and what are the needs we are going to address. Sensory needs can be defined as the sensitivity of a person to one or more of the following eight senses. There are two areas of senses, which are external and internal senses. External senses process information through visual. This is how a person sees things in an environment. Auditory, this is how a person hears the sound in an environment. Olfactory, this is how a person perceives smell. Gustatory, this is how a person perceives taste. And tactile, this is the sense of touch. Internal senses process information through vestibular, this is how a person's balance is maintained. Proprioception, this is for body positioning and movement. And lastly, interoception, this is all about internal body sensations. These eight senses are the fundamental building blocks of how a person perceives the world around him or her. These senses are also the foundation for supporting higher skills like learning, attention, even emotion regulation. Before setting our goals, we have to know what sensory needs to work on. Rebecca said, you cannot address any higher level difficulties without addressing the foundational skills. If a child is having learning difficulties, we cannot address that if we don't look at the factors leading to those challenges. Such difficulties may be a noisy environment. By simple observations, you can find out what sensory needs are requiring your attention. Kids on the autism spectrum are usually sensitive to loud noise. So if we don't address that, the child will focus more on the noise rather than the learning activity. By knowing the child's foundational sensory needs, we can help in alleviating the child's learning challenges by putting up a better plan and addressing them. One thing to keep in mind though is that every child is different and no child must be assessed the same way. Therefore, seek experts' advice. Number two, goal setting. By understanding the learning barrier of a child at a foundational level, you can set the right goal to address that. Remember that even kids with special needs have goals and the main focus is for the child to attain independence. Our role as parents and carers is to support the child in meeting that need. When setting up attainable goals, 
we can look at this in a multidisciplinary approach. This is where sensory integration and occupational therapy comes into the picture. But what is sensory integration? Sensory integration is a process by which our brain receives signals from our senses so that we can make sense of the things around us. This will then enable our body to respond to those signals. <sighs> yeah, I know this is a lot to absorb. So let me give you an example. Let's say you see a glass of pineapple juice on the table and pineapple juice is not new to you and you've tasted one before. So the moment you see that juice on the table, your brain reprocesses the information about your past experience with the pineapple juice and you know that if you drink that, you will experience a sour tasting liquid. The moment you drink that juice, your taste buds send signal to the brain and when your brain processes that information, your brain will expect a sour taste. So what if it turned out that the juice tastes like water and no traces of sourness in it? If that happens, your brain will now tell you, so, this doesn't make sense at all. The color of the juice is the same as before, but the taste is different. So what happened there? So very interesting. So that's how sensory integration works. To address the sensory needs of children, especially those who are on the autism spectrum, an occupational therapist will observe a child's sensory integration and see what actions can be done to improve that sensory need. Once the need has been identified, the child will then be exposed to daily living activities that will support the child's learning progression. The focus of goal setting is then targeted to the following foundational area. Body movements, feeding and self-care, cognitive and visual skills. Body movements involve observing the child's play activities by looking at the hand and feet movement and the whole body movements. So play is an important life skill for kids. Children will learn more through play than from telling them about the things they need to learn. According to researchoutreach.org, play is one of the biggest mysteries of learning. Feeding and self-care. The child's feeding behavior will also be observed. If the child is a picky eater, what contributes to that behavior? Is it because of the color of the food? The texture? And how about the taste? Observing the child's self-care skills is also important as it helps in understanding the child's level of skills. Can the child get dressed by himself or herself? Can the child wash their hands or feet? Or can the child go to the toilet? The next one is cognitive and visual skills. Cognitive and visual skills are also about observing the child's ability to perceive their worlds and be able to execute their tasks. Goal setting is prioritizing the sensory needs of the child, considering what is important for the child and the family. Number three, creativity in therapy. Children behave differently at home and at school. They also behave differently with their peers and with their families. To address the difference in these behaviors, functional activities will be introduced to the child. This will be the sensory integration therapy approach. The therapy focuses on daily living tasks. By focusing on these tasks, Children can still do the things they want to do, and in the long run, this will not give them an impression that they are doing work. These daily living tasks could be eating, going to school, washing hands, playing, and a whole lot more. So the best place for kids to learn while having fun is using the child's natural environment. For best outcome, set up the child's natural environment in a way that the child will want to seek out play. There is no replacement to see these kids learn in their natural environment. For ideas, you can set up a tunnel using carton boxes for the child to explore. You can also put up swing in your backyard for a child to climb or even do a pretend play using the child's favorite toy. And speaking of favorite toys, what if the child has only one favorite toy and doesn't seek out anything else? If the child has no other interest aside from his or her favorite toy, you can use that toy to your advantage. You may get the child's attention by doing so. You can be creative and come up with different play ideas around this same toy. By understanding the sensory needs of a child, you can set meaningful goals that are important for the child's learning needs. In the end, you can improve the independence of children using the learning through play approach. This is my take after watching the presentation, A Functional Approach to Autism by Rebecca Connick 
an occupational therapist. Every tangata fai takiwa tanga, or person with autism, is different. If you fail with one strategy, don't stop. Keep moving forward. Always remember, for every failure you encounter, you're one step closer to your success. Thanks for tuning in. Till next time, memuto te fakawahire. Let's stop judging others. Memahi tahi tato. Let's all work together. Kia kaha, kia maya, stay strong, be brave. Please don't forget to like and share so others can also find us. Thank you. Of how a person perceives the world around him. Around him. By understanding the learning barrier of a child. Barrier. 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 You can set the right gore. Gorer. Observing the child's self-care skills is also. Blah, 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 blah.